So here we have a little simple bathroom vanity unit, uh, borrowed uh, obviously off a of GrabCAD because I don't like trying to do any work if I can help it. Now this is kind of a manufactured model, it's kind of a halfway house really, so we can see we've got the drawers, we've got the doors. It actually doesn't have any true hinges, it's just got mates, so it's actually quite a, a simplified model. And we want to save this out as an IFC file. So straight go up, do a save as, IFC, now we've got the choice here of IFC 2 or IFC 4. Now IFC 4 is the new format, but uh, most people are still on the 2 at the moment, so I'm just going to save it as an IFC 2. Let's create this away in the new folder. Let's give it a name. Right, now let's have a look and see how big this file is. As we can see, this file is over 6 meg. So we need to do something about that. Because the person who's going to be using this end data is not going to be happy with us doing a 6 meg file for a simple vanity unit. Imagine this project was for a hotel and there's going to be a 100 of these in there. And this is just a simple part of a smaller part of a massive, a bigger project. So we need to get this data down, uh, down in size. Now, I would expect to get this down to less than a meg. I mean, actually, I'd like to get this down into the hundreds of kilobytes if I could do. So let's go through the processes to try and do this. The first tool that we're going to try using is SolidWorks's export to AEC. This is a kind of several step tool. So the first part to this is to define how this component is going to be used. So in this case, it's a floor based component. And then all I need to do is select a reference plane or a reference face and a location. So when we export this out, this is what's going to bring it in as its location point. And then we're into the interesting stuff, which is we want to reduce down this level of detail. So on step two, this is what we can do. So the first we're going to do, we've got some general settings, so we can do a high, medium or low. So let's start with the high setting and generate out a preview. It splits the screen into two, which is quite a nice option. But we can see here there's really no difference between the original starting file and our newly generated file. So it's still going to be around 6 meg. Let's open the door here and let's go back to a medium setting. So we've lost some colours, it's also removed like the handle from the internal drawer, but apart from that, the level of detail is exactly the same, so our file size would be the same size. Let's try on the low setting. And now we've actually gone too far the other way. It's removed the worktop and it's removed randomly one door, but it's also left some of the internal components. Now there is another option here, which is the custom setting, which is also known as the D feature tool. So we're going to show you that separately anyway. The D feature tool works in a similar way. So here we go, let's just start this off. So the first thing we might want to do is to remove any internal components. So we we'll tick this and then update the preview. In this case, nothing's really happened. That's because this design doesn't really have anything. So if I close the door and update, again, nothing's happened. The reason being is there's still been a gap within our design. So this only really works with fully enclosed volumes that it would remove any of the internal components. Okay, let's try away uh, again now with the scale tool. So we're going to choose a percentage of the, the assembly size. So here I've set it to 25% and it's removed the door handles, which is kind of fine. I don't really need those in my top level or my exported file. If I upgrade that to 40%, then I've lost the tap. So that I really do need to be seen in my top level assembly. So this is kind of a bit of a, um, a, bit of a, a sledgehammer to attack this problem, but it can be quite useful depending on the design. We can also go around and just manually select any components. So in this case, I'm just picking the two components or the two drawers inside our design. And I'm going to say for the, uh, the feature tool to get rid of those. If we go on to the second step, we've then got the choice to do any kind of assembly motion. I don't really care in this design. 
and now it's a choice for we're kind of building on to a final D feature so we might have certain things we want to keep so this is an option to choose which holes or features so the plumbing that comes out the back and we're probably going to have the waste off the bottom I don't want those to be removed they're kind of important to our design so I've select those two features and then it's gone to the next stage so we've got our typical split screen now and if we have a look we can see where we had the handles it's removed the holes for the handles if we go around the back you can see we've still got our hole for the plumbing but if we look inside we can see we've actually lost some of the holes where the waste would go through the middle of our design now I still want to get rid of some of the actual content here so this is where I can go around and manually pick some of the information so let's pick the actual end of our tap and we don't need this kind of information here on our next level up so you can actually see it's already removed that one for me so I don't need, need to pick that how about all this internal information here so I'm just going around I'm just saying I want to remove that feature there as well let's generate another preview so now we've actually got a fairly simplified model so we've moved all the internal content we've moved some small features we've kept important information into our design so all we need to do now is to save this away as a new component now there is an option here to link it with the original data set so if that gets updated then this new reference model will as well but I'm not too concerned with this one we're not saving this as an IFC yet just saving it as a regular SOLIDWORKS model so we can see we've got our original model and our new one and the only problem with this new one is it has just saved it as one part um, which might be an issue later on the IFC file and in this case I could do different codes on different components uh, which you're kind of going to go through next but let's save this out as an IFC just into our little test folder here and then if we look at the file size we can see we've now got it down to uh, just under 2 meg so we're getting close but I still think we can do better Although the D feature tool is great, it doesn't really benefit from the knowledge of an engineer. So here I've created my own mock-up of the same assembly, but I've just created it down into the three parts. So we've got the cabinet, which you can see has been modelled as a single large lump. We've got the sink and we've got the tap. Now this is important because when we create the IFC file, these are the three things I want to create separate codes for. So let's just have a look and see how big this file currently is. okay so the file has actually increased to just over three and a half meg and that's not a surprise because we now actually have an assembly IFC file containing the three files so if someone needs to track down we can give a separate code for the bowl the tap and the main wooden unit however one of the things that's actually creating a lot of that file size is things like radiuses so I've also created a simplified configuration of that sink this will take out all the actual fillets and if we save this again now we can see the difference that this makes to the size of the file so that has reduced it down now to 840 kilobytes so we're certainly getting into the area that I wanted I want to get less than one meg however there is another trick that we can do to reduce the file size even more because it saves out a tessellated data so it makes the model into a bunch of triangles if we take our image quality and reduce it right the way down to its lowest setting this will actually reduce the amount of triangles that our IFC file creates so now if we save this again as our final test again just another IFC file and we can see what difference this will make so we'll go from 800 kilobytes right the way down to 350 kilobytes 
So we started off at an 8 meg file and we've made this into a 300 kilobyte file. We should be far happy for anyone that's been using this in a BIM software. Okay, so we've created the ideal IFC file, but we do need to add into there the uni classes that we discussed earlier in this session. So let's open up this tab and add that in. So the, uh, the actual codes are going to be added as properties to the file. So if we go here through the description and scroll right the way down to the bottom, you will actually find the IFC codes, Omniclass and Uniclass codes. Now if you don't see these, then you might just need to update your property, your standard template to the latest one. So I had to kind of just update mine to the 2017 file. Uh, so here we can go through, we can browse through. So the vast majority of people, this is going to be coming under the, the PR, which is a product code. And then we can browse through these looking at sanitary fittings. Then we can look in the taps. Until eventually we find the sync taps. Now remember, if you're struggling to find your code, then use the website that I recommended at the start of the presentation. Now I've already added the additional codes to our other components. The only thing I left to do is to actually create our uh, master code for this assembly. So again, going to search our way through, right the way to the bottom, Uniclass, and we then just need to search our way through. It's going to be under another PR or another product code. And this time we're just looking for a vanity unit. Okay, with that done, we just need to save this out as an IFC file. Obviously those codes aren't going to add any real data to our master file. So we're just going to save this out as an IFC and then we'll open this up in an IFC viewer to see what all the work has been about. So this is Tecla BIM site. It's a, a free IFC viewer or free uh, BIM viewer for what a better description. So I'm just going to open up the sync unit that we've been working on. So here's that uh, simplified model that I've created. So it's definitely recognizable as the unit that we've been doing. You can also see as we kind of move this model around and uh, kind of hover over different parts of it, you can see the faceting. So that was kind of, uh, if we wanted more detail in there, we'd need to increase our performance or image quality. And that's where we'd get kind of a few more edges. But at the moment, this is a very efficient file. Now let's have a look at that uh, Uniclass data. So if we just simply right hand mouse button on there, we can actually zoom in and actually see it's taken across the actual uni classes. Again, if we just look on this, just look at the properties on a few of these different units. We can see we've actually got the one there for the sink and we've also got the, the same information for our tap as well. So we've created a very efficient uh, BIM model with the classification data in as well, all to BIM level two. So what did I do again? Well, I started by simplifying the model. Think about which components we actually want to have in the IFC data. So I don't need all the components, all the nuts, bolts, washers, and hinges that go on the doors. All I had in my one was the simplified unit, the sink, and the tap. Obviously, everything will apply to your own models in different ways, but just work out what you need to do. Once that's done, I then removed all the excess feature information. So I removed a lot of fillets because fillets make the IFC files quite big and also any small features. Uh, in terms of the model I had again, I did actually add in important information such as where the outlets of the pipes were going and that was all that was needed. Uh, we then lowered the image quality setting. So again, this just reduces it down. It's probably only really important if you've got kind of curvy shapes in your, in your design. Um, so anything that's tubular that would have to break down into facets, flat surfaces don't take up too much memory anyway. Then we went into the individual components that made up our assembly and we added the Uniclass properties. So this is what people are going to search for within their BIM, pro, uh, BIM tools. And then finally we exported that out to an IFC file. I've been using IFC2 uh, but obviously the latest one could be using IFC4 as well. And I suppose my final little thing there is just to check that file size. Because bear in mind how big this is, how big it could be going into the other people's projects. Just use your own common sense. If your thing is quite a large, complicated device and it does need the extra memory, then it's fine. 
but I try and keep mine down under the kilobyte size. So apart from a brief mention um, earlier in this session, um, how do you handle Revit files? Well, unfortunately, Autodesk have kind of tied down the actual Revit file format uh, quite tightly. So there is no native export from SolidWorks directly to Revit. But just remember that uh, Revit isn't a BIM standard. It is a BIM tool. So a Revit file you can't open very easily in uh, MicroStation or any of the other actual recommended BIM tools. So the way we would actually recommend this is to continue through using the IFC format. Um, or if you'd like to go directly into Revit as well, you can also use the ACES or .sat format. Now the nice things about using these is they are not revision dependent. So the fact that you can upgrade your Revit files, um, you can update your uh, MicroStation, and these will still work. Whereas obviously if you have a Revit file, or if you save it as a Revit file, and then someone updates their Revit to the latest version, then you would actually not be able to open an older version, or sorry, a newer version in the older version of the software. So actually going down the IFC route, or the ACES route, is a better way of going. And it also means that uh, the actual kind of BIM native data is potentially not BIM level 2 or level 3 compliant, because you're kind of forcing it to have to be Revit rather than being in the actual open BIM, which is obviously the level 3 compliant, so anyone could open that with any piece of software rather than just one piece of software. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I'm Stuart Wortley, and uh, if you have any questions regarding this seminar, then please give me, uh, probably the best bet would be send me an email at stuart.wortley at cadtech.com. Uh, should you have any comments, um, if there's any information that needs updating, uh, or if there's any more information you think that people should know, then please let us know.